Welcome back, Doc's Tools. I'm Tom. So tonight we get a little short. Um, some guys have been asking me about the etching press build, and uh, I'm working on a large etching press. Um, but what may be of interest to the folks that are following this project is that uh, quite a few years ago I built a small one. So what I thought I would do is drag that one out and uh, shoot a little video of going over it and some of the, uh, the design points of that small etching press. Um, so the large etching press is basically just an expanded version of that, a much larger, much heavier machine uh, for doing very large prints. Um, so anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's go drag that thing out and get the camera over there and we'll take a look at that and, um, and go over some of the design uh, aspects of that etching press. Alright boys, so uh, here's the, this is the little etching press that I built a few years ago. Actually quite a few years ago now. Um, I think I had the date on here. 2007 I built this. Um, and this was kind of a, <laughs> it was a stopgap effort um, to building the large one that I'm working on now. So this, I designed this up pretty quickly and, uh, and built it over a period of, um, I don't know, one and a half weekends. Um, it's pretty straightforward. These things are fairly simple, in particular if the parts are small. Um, the large one is complicated because the parts are so big and it's really an art piece where this one was, was more uh, what I would call utilitarian. So the basic functionality of this is, um, and I'll, I'll move the camera around so you guys can see it. Um, it's got some felt blankets. And it's got a bed here. Okay. Um, and there's two rolls, like a clothes ringer. And then you can move the rolls up and down like so, okay? Now these are independent here, and there's some little scales on the side. We'll see those in a sec. Um, then there's a little gear reduction um, to, um, so that you can, run the, uh, you can run the stuff through, okay, under pressure. And then these felt blankets act like a, um, um, they spread the pressure out um, over, the, over the plate. And I have a plate I'll show you too, so an etching plate. So, anyway, this is kind of the one. Um, the most, probably one of the more interesting parts is this gear reduction here that I came up with. I had a bunch of spur gears, so I just kind of used them. So here's the input here. Here's the input. This gear here inputs to this gear, which is connected to the rear gear. So we get a reduction, and then we get another reduction to that. So kind of it's a two-step reduction there, okay? Uh, just to make it easy to, uh, to turn the handle, okay? All right, so let me move the camera a little bit, and uh, um, we'll look at the, kind of a different, uh, a different angle. Okay, so here we can kind of see the, uh, we can see the bed plate, and uh, we'll just push this back so you guys can see. That's a stop. So there's the, there's the second roller. These are three inch diameter solid steel and um, this is about 300 millimeters here, um, 12 inches. And uh, it has um, spherical ball bearings on the ends um, that compensate for any load on the, uh, on the rolls. And then these cam followers here, these basically just support the bed as it comes out. Um, comes out board here okay um, and here we can see some uh, elevation scales it's important that the, the the nip is parallel all the time and um, when you have an independent adjustment like this it's pretty easy to get the nip uh, crooked especially if you're going up and down to uh, to say clean the rolls or something like that um, so I made these scales here these are engraved uh, scales and they have a little veneer uh, so that you can interpolate in between um, in between marks uh, divisions there. Um, let's see what else. So stainless steel screws, uh, silicon bronze uh, bolts that are tapped through that are threaded in into these bars here as my uh, my nuts, so to speak. Um, and then we have some threaded collars here with some thrust bearings and a bushing in here. So um, if you're cranking this under load, you're, you're bearing down against a, uh, a needle thrust bearing in this area here. 
Um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, I'll show you a plate here. Well, let me uh, change the camera around and then uh, I'll, I'll point down at this and, and we'll look at an actual etching plate. Okay, so here's an, here's an etching plate. Let's take one out here. And this is uh, one that my wife made here. And this is a bridge scene. Everything is reversed. Uh, so this is a zinc plate here. Okay. And um, so you, there's some snake oil that you put on these things, uh, asphaltum and some other things like that. Um, to mask this, then you scratch through the masking, and then you put it in a corrosive material that kind of bites the plate. And, you know, you can feel this. It's, they're basically light um, gouges or scratches, basically. So the idea here is um, when you have this plate like this, is you ink it. So imagine just kind of liquid ink, and you, you, you rub ink all over this here, and you very carefully wipe it off, okay? And the negatives here, the, the innies, uh, retain ink, and the outies, the silver parts, um, don't retain ink. So these become, um, so the lows are the darks, and, um, well, kind of like it is here. So the lows are darks, and the, uh, the lights are lights, okay, when it's prints. Um, and like I said, it's reversed, so this prints up. You know, so it looks like, well, you can't see it, you know, but it prints in that direction when you print it up. So, as, you know, for the artists, they have to kind of do things in reverse, you know. Uh, and this is the um, Benicia Bridge here and uh, Mount Diablo here in the, uh, in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so this is kind of looking south um, towards Mount Diablo and uh, and uh, seeing the Benicia Bridge there, so that's that one. Um, and then there's another one here. This is a little little more uh, uh, radical here. This is the uh, uh, one that she did. It was a series of, uh, of images that uh, were based on uh, tarot cards, kind of. And you have this female blacksmith here and this poor bugger over here uh, waiting to get, I don't know what, Anyway, um, um, like I said, the art. My wife's the artist in the family. Uh, uh, I do the technical stuff, like like this. Anyway, that's kind of her stuff. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll zoom in and uh, look at a couple things, a couple other things here on the uh, on the press for your for you guys. Put those away. Okay, so here's the uh, a little close-up of the gear reduction, and then here's a little little nameplate that I made uh, just for fun to put it on the side. Uh, the sides are uh, one inch, 25 millimeter aluminum. Um, excuse me, by 100 millimeter aluminum. All right, um, and what else? The bed is made of a phenolic composite here. Okay, um, it's it's a little so. When the plate's pinched between there, there's a lot of pressure right through this line right here. Um, and if you use a metal plate, what tends to happen is over time, they, uh, from that high pressure, they yield. Um, so you need something that's hard, but has a, um, the, the right kind of springiness characteristics that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't yield. So uh, the phenolic seems to be holding up pretty good. I, originally, I had a half-inch aluminum. Uh, bed in here anyway it started to take a curve and we got rid of that and uh, and put the phenolic in there so some presses use steel and uh, and they actually uh, over over many years will uh, will do the same thing too uh, with high pressure so all right so here you can see the uh, the brass veneer scale and the uh, the roll uh, by the way these are uh, are nickel plated to protect them from corrosion so uh, uh, and the big guy will have uh, um, um, the rolls will be nickel plated also. So just for scale, uh, so this is three inch by twelve inch here. The large press is going to be eight inch by forty eight inch. Okay, that's how big it is. So the the rolls on the large press these will be eight inch diameter and they'll be forty eight inches long. So it's quite a scale increase.
All right, and the last thing here is uh, our silicon bronze nuts and lead screws, and then um, the uh, the push-pull thrust bearing arrangement here. So this is actually there's a threaded collar, a threaded collar. Uh, there's a bearing in this plate. It's a, basically a bushing. Um, and then two needle thrust bearings here. So what I can do is I can actually preload against this plate. So there's very, there's very little back there. There's, okay, that's better than some lathes, okay, uh, as far as backlash goes. So I can kind of preload it uh, um, and uh, take out any backlash so that they, um, you're not trying to compensate for backlash when you're going up or down with an independent adjustment. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense to me anyway.